In this video, I'm gonna explain the differences between the iMac M1 that just barely came out uh, versus the Mac Mini that has the M1 chip inside of it as well. I'm gonna explain the differences, similarities, and whether or not you should get the iMac or the Mac Mini, and which is best for you. Now, the Mac Mini M1 comes in a standard one color option of silver, or whatever they wanna call the color. It's silver, just a heads up. So. That's the single color you can get with the Mac Mini, which is okay in my opinion. I think it looks good. It's been the same design for a long time. It, it looks good. It's a square of metal. The only issues with it are the Bluetooth connectivity issues with uh, different mice and keyboards. But aside from that, you can get around them and it works good. So that's the Mac Mini. The iMac has everything built into it and it comes in a plethora of colors, pretty much any color you could possibly want. And they look cool, they're fun colors, and yeah, it can change the way that your room looks that you put your iMac in. So that's something to consider if the aesthetic portion of it is very important to you. Now I'm gonna get a little bit into the specs here, and this is where my opinion kinda shifts between the two a bit more leaning to one side more than the other. I'll be comparing the base model of both of them just to be fair about it. So the base model Mac Mini M1 versus the base model iMac M1, uh, both, have their pros and cons. The Mac Mini base model has the eight core CPU with the eight core GPU M1, whereas the base model of the iMac M1 has the eight core CPU, but the only seven core GPU. So it's one core less. It's not, it, it's a little bit of nitpicking. In my opinion, it's not that big of a deal. The one core vast majority, 99% of people are not going to notice a difference between one single core in the GPU. However, for those of you who are doing uh, video editing, photo editing, stuff like that, you might notice a tiny bit of a difference if you compare directly side by side as you're doing at the same exact time, but no one's gonna be doing that. You're gonna be having one computer and you're gonna be working on your project and you're not gonna notice or be thinking about, oh man, this would be so much different on the other computer. It, that's not gonna be in your mind. So really just, it's something to note, but it's so negligible in my mind that it doesn't matter. It's it's just a, a mute point. It doesn't matter. The iMac M1 has everything all packaged into one. Everything that you need to get started up and running is all right there. You've got the computer, the screen, the camera, so that you can do your video calls and all that, as well as FaceTime calls, all that fun stuff. And it also has the keyboard and mouse. And of course, depending on which version of those that you want, there's different versions of the keyboard now. You're gonna be spending more and more money, but it all comes with that, even in the base model package. The Mac Mini base model does not have all of that. It just comes with a computer and that's it. You're gonna need to get your own keyboard and mouse as well as your own monitor. And if you want to do video calls and whatnot, you're gonna need to get a camera to be able to do that. Also the speakers. You're not gonna be able to listen to any speakers on your Mac Mini right out of the box. You're gonna need to buy some if you want to be able to listen to any sort of music through your Mac Mini. Or you can just plug in some headphones and you're good to go. For the iMac, it has a built-in speaker system. It actually sounds really nice and it comes pre-built into it. The giant difference between these two things, you'd be thinking probably right now, well, the iMac is the way to go. However, the price tag is quite a bit different on the two base models. The base model of the iMac comes in at $1,299, whereas the base model of the Mac Mini comes in at $699. So that's a big difference there. We did a little number crunch there with the calculator, and that is a difference of $600. Now, I'm no expert with numbers, as you can tell. I'm gonna pull up a calculator for that, but that's a lot of lettuce right there. 600 smackers right? That's a lot of money. With $600, you're going to need to be able to buy a keyboard and mouse and a monitor and possibly some speakers and a camera if you want all those things. Now, the thing that I like about the Mac Mini, and this reason is why I personally prefer getting a Mac Mini over the iMac, is because I can change things based on what I prefer. I love the screen that the iMac provides. It's a great screen. However, it's too small. 24 inches nowadays for a monitor screen is just, it's outdated, in my opinion. And for what I do, video editing, photo editing, stuff like that, I need a bigger monitor. I've got these old eyes here and stuff, and, and I, it's just nice to be able to have a big screen to be able to easily 
put different projects on both sides of the screen and different things going all at once. A 24 inch screen is just too small. I use a 32 inch Samsung monitor, 4K, and it works great. It's not quite as crisp and clear as the uh, IMAX monitor that's built in, but it's really nice and it's much, much bigger. That's something to keep in mind is if you like everything all in one already packaged and you like the package that they're providing you, the iMac, that's probably the way to go. You're probably gonna like it a lot and it's it's gonna be hassle-free. You're not gonna have to worry about troubleshooting stuff. The Mac Mini, there might be a little bit of troubleshooting. Probably everything will just work for you because you're lucky like that and not like me where things just don't work right out of the box. I don't know why that's how things work. But I had Bluetooth issues with mine, with the Mac Mini and setting up my keyboard and mouse and uh, yeah but things are good now. One other point that I'd really like to stress out about the iMac, the screen is great, but why did Apple have to go and include the giant chin at the bottom of the screen again? Why did they do that? I really feel like it's it's a great computer and an all-in-one package, but why? I For me, I much would have preferred it being a little bit bigger behind the screen and not so thin. I don't care about that. I don't look behind my screen. It could be a few inches bigger behind the screen. That's fine. And they could have put all the internals behind there, plenty of airflow, things would be good, and they could be done with the chin down below. That would have been the ideal situation. It would have looked so much more just sleek and modern and nice in my opinion, but hey, that's just me, I guess. Ultimately for me, what it came down to was what was I gonna be using it for and what was I going to enjoy more, obviously. Also, I'm a little bit more budget, you know, cautious about things and I like getting a good deal. And I feel like the Mac Mini is that better deal because I can customize it how I want and it just gives me the base of what I need and I just pay exactly what Apple's charging me for, even though it's a higher priced compared to some things. And I feel like the keyboard and mouse that I got is a lot more premium feeling than the standard keyboard and mouse that comes with the iMac and all Apple computers. Being able to customize things a bit more, that's that's my cup of tea. That's what I enjoy being able to do. I would highly recommend if you are a video editor or photo editor, get the 16 gigabytes of RAM. Everything that I've heard, I, I haven't gotten the eight gigabyte one so I can properly tell you the differences, but I've seen tons of videos and just read tons of articles about it. Get the 16 gigabytes, you're gonna be happier with it. I've gotten the 16 gigabyte just right off the bat and I haven't had any issues that ever other people have talked about and I like it a lot. So if you're a video editor, you're gonna be using it for any type of video editing, go with the 16 gigabytes. It's worth the extra 200 bucks that you're gonna spend. Uh, it's gonna be more future proof and you're gonna be able to keep editing videos for a long period of time, even when there's crazy resolutions that you're gonna be editing in in the future. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. I get back to all the comments that I feel are asking for a response. And uh, yeah, appreciate you coming by. We'll see you in the next video.